So thank you for joining us. Um, I will just have each team member that's joining us here today introduce themselves. Um, I'm Cameron Faggio. I'm the founder of Data Stories. And um, I'm really excited to just be here to share this opportunity to bring data to as many communities and individuals as possible. And that's really the mission of our work. We're a nonprofit. We're really focused on creating opportunities and experiences that make it possible for people to understand data, become more literate, and empower them through that. And so then next, I'll hand it off to Jordan. Hi, I'm Jordan Cronon. Um, uh, I'm an educator by trade, um, but I do a lot of data in my spare time. So um, I'm a project associate here, and I work alongside uh, Caleb. Um, and our other team members just to create sort of educational materials that you'll see today. Sure, so I'm gonna go next, I'm Alan. Hi everyone, happy weekend. I'm excited to be here at Open Data Week. This is my second Open Data Week and this is the first time that I've been able to present. So really excited about that. Um, VP of Community and Impact, I, love you know getting the community involved with data data is everywhere and you know i'm just really excited to have a mission like this working with cameron jordan and caleb to get data storytelling out there <clears throat> good morning everyone i'm caleb weinbrenner i'm the curriculum developer here at data stories um i also was a teacher for many years and work a lot in geospatial data science so my work with data stories is a nice way to bring my love of education and storytelling and my love of data, especially data around really amazing places like New York together to create interesting experiences. So I'm excited to play with data kits today. Thank you so much. So that's just a little bit about who we are. So we just wanted to get a real sense quickly who's joining us today. So if you can just go to pollev.com and then enter in this code and you will see that there is a poll up there for everybody to respond to. So if you could just do that real quick, that would be great. This is a great, thank you for sharing this. This is really kind of a nice sampling of uh, who's here. It's definitely exciting for us that there are a lot of students here. Um, I like to see a lot of program and uh, program managers, product managers, people who are working in industry, as well as a lot of civic tech. That's great. Definitely want to make sure that we are getting as many opportunities to expose and get introduced to data as we can. All right. So with that, I'm just going to jump back to my presentation. All right. So as I mentioned before, Data Stories is a 501c3 nonprofit, and we really are just dedicated to bringing data literacy and data storytelling to as many communities and institutions as we can. And our focus is really on creating solutions that we can embed in different locations and that are, they are sustainable. And we are very mindful of the work that we do and the impact that it has when it's put in the hands of the people in a school or in a business or in a community that can really take it and make it their own. Um, the beauty of course, being able to go online and bring resources around the world is that you can reach a wide range of people. But for us, we realize that coupled with a community focus is essential. So today's workshop and the reason you're here is to learn about our data kits. And so we're going to walk through the data kit experience and show you what that's all about. Um, we'll come back to this slide in a little bit. But for today, we were really focused on creating these data kit experiences around the New York City Squirrel Census data, the Link NYC Hubs data set, New York City baby names, as well as the Wi Fi hotspots. So I'm going to switch my screens here and I will just give you a quick overview of what those data kits look like. So the first data kit that we have here is this NYC Wi-Fi hotspots. 
second data, and you'll see they are a page long document and Caleb, one of our team members will be diving in deep to give you an overview of one of the data kits. The second one here is baby names. And we've also got the link NYC hubs and then the squirrel census data kit. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then I'll hand it over to Caleb and he can do a deep dive into what a data kit is. All right, hi everyone. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to look specifically at that squirrel census data kit. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time going over the structure of the data kit, but we're going to spend most of our time in the spreadsheet with the data itself. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get a link to the data kit in the chat in just a moment as well, so that you can follow along uh, and play with the data when the time comes. Just a moment. Okay, so I'm just confirming. Everyone can see the Google Doc that says NYC Squirrel Census. Yes, good. Okay, so each data kit, um, we try to frame it around an essential question, some deeper question we want people to understand. In this case, we're focusing on community justice and thinking about the U.S. 2020 Census. Now, big, digging into the 2020 Census data or the 2010 Census data, that would be a lot of data, and that can be really complicated. But this is a nice way to get students to engage with this. Remember, our target audience here is primarily middle and high school students or maybe community programs. So we can't always go as deep as we want to with some of the issues in a single data kit. But as you can see here, we're aiming for about 75 minutes for someone to really understand and experience. So that means there's about 15 minutes that we devote to them reading or exploring something uh, in this case. And we won't spend time reading these right now, but there's a short article on demography or the sort of statistical calculations that people could do with census data, which for students would be a valuable frame of reference to have. And then there's an article I found that was specifically on how census data was used and the kinds of targeted questions you could ask with it. This is very helpful, we found, because it gives us a way to frame the questions that accompany the data set and to understand what exactly can this data do for you. Even if we're looking at counting squirrels, there are specific ways that you can think about that. And so with these ideas in mind and maybe some brainstorm phrases jotted down, which like I said, we're not going to spend a lot of time on that portion today, well, you would then be able to open the data set in the link here that's here in the data kits. I already have it open here. So just checking, can everyone still see my screen, see the spreadsheet? Yes. All right, good. Just making sure technology is still working. It's always nice when that happens. So we've got this spreadsheet and it's all of the information from the uh, NYC open data, although we've cleaned it up a little bit for student use. And then of course, in addition to the data itself, as people can read through it and try to get an understanding, we have some targeted questions as well. That we would want people working through this data kit to spend some time answering. So I want to back up a moment. I want to uh, open this up for a bit of discussion. We've got our questions here, but if you were just to look at this data and you were thinking about census data, could someone either in the chat or maybe with the hand raise function suggest What's the kind of question you could use uh, this data to answer? What's something you might be able to figure out if you had a squirrel census? Trying to see if there's a hand raised, sorry. Got one from Kate. Kate, go ahead. Sure. Um, so if there's a lot of squirrel activity somewhere, perhaps there's a lot of uh, trees or like healthy uh, animal ecosystem going on in, in the urban environment. Good, good, yeah. We could definitely use this data to think about broader context. What if we were thinking about the squirrel population itself? What if, what if there was something we would want to know about the squirrels? Um, well, I'd put how many uh, adult squirrels there are. <laughs> yeah, definitely knowing that we have the age, being, getting a sense of the ratio of adults to juveniles in the population. And as I'm sure we can all imagine, Having the ages of people, if this were looking at other census data, this could be a really valuable way to get students to think about why something like a census is really important too, to make sure everyone counts. Could I maybe get one other example question before we dive into the ones that I wrote and how to solve them with the data? 
Uh, we have yeah. a few in the chat. So okay. one of them Fantastic. are when they are the most active. Um, when even. they are the most active. Ooh, uh, or density over location. I like that question, LK. It's not something we have time for today, but that's definitely definitely a great question. Yeah. So, it, so obviously. So sorry. Sorry, Caleb. I was just going to jump in. We've got a couple more. So Michael asked about demographic changes over time, right? So that's something that could be examined as well as location and reason of specific location, right? So maybe that tells us some more about where the squirrels are, or Julian just asked, you know, what neighborhood can I find cinnamon squirrels? Because I've never seen one. Hmm, that's a good question. Oh, those are great questions. I love this. And I love that already with the questions we're thinking of, we're going beyond the scope of what you could do in just a really quick workshop like this. Because that's our goal here at Data Stories. We don't want the data to be like, okay, well, you played with the data for a few minutes. Good luck. Instead, we want to provoke those deeper experiences. We want someone to get really curious about the data and say, I want to play with this more. I want to learn the coding skills to answer those more complicated questions that I couldn't answer with a simple spreadsheet formula, like density over time or other sort of, uh, or density by location, I mean, or changes over time, things like that. Things that can be found out, but maybe can't be found out with just one line of code. They take a little more digging. I love everyone's engagement. With that in mind, here are the questions that I came up with. So how many different colors of squirrel are seen in the given data and are any colors missing from the squirrel population in New York? Now, all of you are probably expert with spreadsheets, but I wanna walk through that there are a couple of reasons why we think this is a really excellent way to introduce students to the data science. If I'm looking at colors of squirrel, I can look at primary fur color and I'm sure you all know this, but uh, we can add the filter here and we can see, okay, there are none that, are that, that aren't listed with color, but we have our three different colors. So we've started to answer this question. Now, let's say you're a student who's really, really intimidated by, uh, intimidated by spreadsheets. You love these questions, but you're not yet comfortable with data. We want this to be usable for any student who wants to do this, regardless of their ability. So I'm going to show you two different ways to come to the same answers. One way doesn't involve a lot of calculation, but it's something that can get students engaged in learning about data, even if they're very apprehensive, and especially if they're visual learners. And then another way will allow them to start getting comfortable with formulas. So Google Sheets, one of the things I love about it is that I can go here, I just clicked on that little arrow and I can say column stats for colors. And there I have already the number of the three different colors. And from there, I can figure that out. Those further calculations that I'd like to make. But what if I'm a little more comfortable with formulas? So what I tell people to do is you come over, I've already added an extra column. We'll say categories. We knew from experience that we had black and we had gray and we had, I can spell cinnamon, I promise. We had cinnamon. And now I think to myself, oh, you know what? Like that other person in the room, I was excited about those cinnamon squirrels. So what would I do? This is the sort of time where students can get some really hands-on practice with data science. I'm going to do the quick version because I know the formula but I'm going to show all of you that with a little practice and a little guidance with the materials that we provide, students can start to play around with these formulas too. I happen to know there's a formula called count if. So I'm going to use that formula and it allows a conditional count. Well, I know my colors are in row J. So I've got my row J and I wanna find the cinnamon squirrels. Remember, it's a string, so it goes in quotes. And we'll type cinnamon 384. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, how do I know that's accurate? Well, we can go back to our column stats for, whoops, come on. Oh, well, it won't let me do it that way, so I'll go back here. We can go back to our column stats. And there we have it, 384. We've checked our work. 
So even if you're not comfortable doing the formula, you're getting to the same conclusion. Now you're probably thinking, okay, but what about those students who are really visual? What about the students who are interested that this is a data story? How do we tell a story with that data? Well, I'm glad you asked. So I'm going to close out my column stats and I'm going to go insert and chart. Now, obviously different charts tell different kinds of stories. And here I'm interested in understanding percentages of the squirrels as well. So I think to myself, well, a good way to represent a percentage would be a pie chart. I'm going to tell it to aggregate the data from J and I'm going to tell it that one of the rows is a header. So already without a lot of cleaning up, we've got our colors, we've got our percentages. Now, because this is data storytelling, we're not just gonna leave the chart with its default settings. We're gonna customize it a little bit so that we can really understand the results here. And I'm going to say, you know what? I really think that we should have a label on the slice showing that percentage instead. Or you could continue to play around with this. Maybe I've decided I want the labels and I'm going to make the text color white so it shows up. You know what? And I wanna change the slice colors so that they match. I wanna note here, by the way, as I'm changing these colors, that one thing I always try to be aware of in our work, as we're encouraging students to make data visits or we're making data visits for ourselves, that we choose color schemes that are colorblind friendly and easy to read. Data stories is about understanding the story behind the data, not getting stuck because you can't read the data. And we think access for everyone truly means the data viz is equitable. So I wanna shout out to that whole movement to make equitable data viz as well. I could spend some more time cleaning this up, of course, but you see, you've got a way to understand visually that the vast majority of the squirrels in Central Park in New York are gray squirrels. And if you wanted to see some cinnamon squirrels, Central Park's a pretty good place to see them. If you wanna see black squirrels, not so much. That's taking the data right there and making it into a story. It's not much of a story yet, but it could become one. So if we're already contextualizing this around questions of, why do we count and why do populations matter and why are we noticing these differences? We can go back to this Q&A and we've got a sense already that we can understand the different colors. We can understand there are no colors missing. We've gotten the percentages. And just like I did with the colors, I could do the same thing with the adults versus juveniles. I could use that count if function or I could use a pie chart. Again, this isn't about prescribing a specific method of data science. This is about getting students to analyze the data, which I wanna invite all of you to do in breakout rooms shortly. The other thing I wanna point out though, is that our questions aren't just about data exploration. When you get into your breakout rooms in just a few minutes, you're also going to dive into some analysis questions, like considering what do you do if certain fields don't have an answer? because we've cleaned up the data kit a little bit for the exploration questions, there are no fields without an answer for age or color, but what about for some of those squirrel behaviors? Or what if a student got curious and went to look at the open data kit set or a different set of data they found out on the web? Would they know how to deal with those gaps? We think that's an important question for data literacy. And then finally, thinking about something like the, the date and the time, like some of you mentioned in the questions, that's not something that maybe a student would feel ready to answer, but at least if they start thinking about why those questions matter, we're preparing them to take a deeper dive further into the data. And with that in mind, I want all of you to take a deeper dive further into the data in breakout rooms. Cameron, before we do that, did I miss anything? Um, if you could just go back to the data kit and just go to the third section. Oh, yes. Really excellent. Thank you for that. Thank just you. kind of kind of close the loop on that last piece where it's talking about the create. Yes, of course, my apologies. Right, so uh, 
we are hoping that that exploring and visualizing, like I did just did with you in a very hurried sense, students would spend about 20 minutes with that and answer those questions. And then we'd want to spend the majority of their time doing things like creating a Twitter thread. And we've got some other storytelling modalities we encourage as well to get them to think about uh, how they would interpret the graphs and what that means for them in a way that they could explain to someone else, really getting, getting the narrative that's going on behind the data for that squirrel community here in New York. And then hopefully also learning more about storytelling structures and ways in which data isn't just something that's out there floating in binary and bits, but something that is part of their lives and something that they can interact with in a way to understand the world around them. Awesome. And I'll say so more on what we're doing for storytelling later on. Sure. And so at this point, what we'd like to do is first off, I'm going to hit enter there. If you look in the chat, there are links to all of the data kits. So we encourage you to go and copy and paste one of those links into your browser. And then um, we're actually going to randomly assign to four different breakout rooms. So feel free, we will automatically assign that. And each one of our team members here, Jordan, Caleb, Alan, myself, will be jumping between rooms. And so, um, or actually, you know what? I apologize, I'm going to let you choose the rooms. And so what we'll do is we'll set one room for each different data kit. I think that's probably a better way to structure it given the size of what we have. So um, room one is going to be squirrel. Room two will be NYC or link NYC. Room three will be Aiden's. And then room four will be Wi Fi hotspots. Okay, so I'm going to open all of those rooms. So feel free to jump into those rooms. Um, here are the links to the data sets and the data kits. Um, I'll repost this in the chat and I posted it earlier. So that way everybody has access to the slide deck. Um, the way to access more data kits is to join data stories. Uh, membership is free. As a nonprofit, our goal is to really just get more resources into the hands of communities and people. So that's sort of true to who we are. And so feel free to join us. And likewise here, I'll throw these things in the chat. And then we're also looking for some volunteers. So if this kind of excites you and you want to contribute as a mentor or um, as an advisor or a facilitator for different activities, um, check out the volunteer link. Um, I'll actually invite all of the Data Stories team members to um, just share any last thoughts. And then we'll actually close before we do that though. Um, one thing that's really been near and dear to us is finding ways to increase visibility of data science all around while um, supporting the mission of data stories and other nonprofits. Um, so for Black History Month, we partnered with um, an organization called CAF Rise Above and actually Alan, I'll let you speak to it because you know the group quite well and just talk a bit about this project. Oh, we lost your audio. Hope you muted. Yeah, I'm back. I couldn't find the mute button. <laughs> so yeah, we, um, you know, the team we came up with, well, Cameron kind of came up with the wearable data um, concept and we've been building towards it, pretty much putting data visualizations on t-shirts and hoodies. And our first um, organization to partner with was CAF Rise Above. Uh, they do a lot of educational programming about the Tuskegee Airmen. Um, they were heroes and, you know, their story is definitely out there, but it definitely needs to be continued to be pushed out there. They fought for our country. Um, they didn't always get the same 
treatment back, but they are definitely heroes. And we're partnering with CAF Rise Above. We have two, um, teach, two wearable designs. Now we're also doing um, partnering, we're doing a Tuskegee Airmen Challenge on Twitter where people have been using the data from CAF Rise Above to create visualizations and tell data stories like some of the ones we were doing today. Uh, two of the visualizations that were from the community that were chosen as wearables are here on the slide. Uh, the first one is a what we're calling the US map. It shows the home states of the airmen. Um, in addition to the US, they were also in Haiti. Um, and also the second one is a, what I'm calling it the Boisian style. So W.E.B. Du Bois has done some data visualizations. And the second one here, the airmen globe is based off of one of his um, visualizations and it's showing again the home state of each of the airmen and where they were stationed in Italy. So they were stationed in Sicily and Ramatelli. And so again, I you know I encourage you to click on these links. I'll share them in the chat as well. Um, and please, um, every wearable that's purchased supports what we do. And we're also partnering with CAF Rise Above to give a portion of those proceeds as well. And it's our final week, so we're going to be doing a 10-day countdown soon. So please get be a part of that. Definitely get a t-shirt or wearable, please. Thank you. Awesome. And with that, um, we'll just, I'm going to share the link to the slides so everybody has access to the slide deck. But let's just take the last few minutes here to ask questions, share thoughts. Um, and I don't know if every team member, Jordan, Caleb, Alan, if you want to post your email in the chat in case somebody wants to reach out to you with additional questions after the session. Um, but we are here, we're part of the community and we want to sort of keep that conversation going. So with that, I don't know if anybody wants to come off mute, has any questions. I just want to add as well, everyone, that something we're working on um, that'll be unveiled in the next few weeks is that Data Stories is also putting together a storytelling guide. So you've got your charts, you've got your data, you've played with it. You wanna tell a data story, what exactly does that look like? So we're working on, on providing our own resources as sort of the next step for that and why storytelling and narrative building is so important for experiential education. Uh, Cameron put the draft up on our screens. It's not done yet, but it's coming along nicely. It'll have lots of resources of ways we can think about structuring storytelling and making sense using narrative uh, of all the, the numbers and the data that students have to play with. Thank you for that, Caleb. Um, you know, and really, I mean, everything Caleb just said, right? We're very excited to be able to release this and share it with our community. Um, so let's see, anybody have any questions? Or anything that they'd like to ask, share? Uh, Caleb mentioned something about uh, map making studio. Uh, I wanted to know a little bit more about that because uh, I'm not a cartographer. Okay. Oh. I was, I was meaning that that's some of my work outside of data stories. Although if you're interested in spatial data for data stories, we're working on, on getting some tools ready for that as well. Because that is my background as a map maker is that eventually we wanna bring that as a, a way to do more data viz. But that's, that's a little further down the line for some of those larger data sets. Oh, okay. Uh, I just put the slide deck back in the chat. So feel free to jump into that and check out the resources that we have. I have another question in the chat. So um, okay. does Data Stories work with nonprofit organizations to help organizations better use their data to tell stories? Uh, one particular use case would be for grant seeking activities. I think that's a great question. We're certainly not opposed to it. I think as a young startup, really kind of setting our trajectory and looking at places where we can have that impact. So um, uh, do you go by Lee? If you have any ideas or suggestions, if you wanna reach out to us via email, uh, our 
form of email is everybody's first name. Um, and actually, John asks a great question. What about Women's History Month? So um, we have a data kit for that as well. We're just putting, putting the finishing touches on that data kit. So that will be released in the coming week. So be on the lookout for that. We'll push it out with an announcement via Twitter. And um, we are working on a strategy that tackles a couple of different things where we have a regular cadence of data kits as well as um, wearable data that reflects different activities that are going on in the world. Um, Caleb has recommended, you know, sort of some more topical issues, which is really a great way to think about pressing issues at a time. You know, we have a data kit that we've, I, Caleb, remind me if it's, I think it's just about done. It's one on, um, remind me, on the mouse data kit. It's really on. Yeah, I, I wrote a I wrote a data kit on book burnings because of the, the slew of book burnings that have happened, uh, book burnings and book bannings, I should say, because of everything that's been going on with that and censorship over the last few months. That data kit is in its last stage of polishing and is probably going to be released That'll probably be the next one after the Women's History Month data kit uh, so that we can speak to some of those contemporary issues. Yeah. And I would say the best way to be in the loop on that is follow us on Twitter. That's where we share out a lot of stuff as well as on LinkedIn. And then if you join as a member, you get access to all of our materials there. Um, we have that storytelling guide. We also have an intro to data guide that we created. Jordan is uh, putting some final touches on our club guide. So if people are looking to start an after school club, our goal is to create resources to enable people to bring this. So we want to make sure we do what we can to make that happen. So um, again, however you want to get involved, however, um, any ideas, but regardless of that, this session was just a chance for us to share with you and hopefully you have some materials and some experiences that you can take away and either just enrich your data experience more or bring it to people that you support and work alongside. So with that, I don't know if anybody has any other questions. We'll hang out here if anybody wants to chat one on one, but it is uh, it's a Saturday. It's amazing that you took time out of your day to join us. So unless anybody else has anything on the, anybody else on the team, if you have anything you wanna close with, we'll sort of say thank you. Guys, appreciate it, really, really. Uh, can, can I add something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, did, you guys, uh, did you guys ever think that uh, if you could have like a mini story to tell to babies, people that are very young age, like uh, a set that has maybe 10 or 12, and then you give them the exercise to learn how to manipulate the data. I'm you know, it'll, it'll be like a nano set. I'm thinking of the A for Analytics children's book that was released recently. Oh, yes. So okay. that is an excellent resource. So I recommend that book. Um, I don't know if one of the team members could search for it on Amazon. For it. It. Yeah. Um, it's actually by one of our supporters. He runs a very successful analytics firm and it's a great book. It's really very cool. So that's a, that's a children's book. It doesn't directly answer the question you just asked, right? Because you were specifically saying, how do you have that experience? You know, how do you create yeah, something? Very for children? Yeah, um, it's not something that we've looked at, but I think, and I might've heard it in Jordan's session and it's something we're doing at Data Stories. When we started data stories, we really focused on the high school age because we were saying when, when we're looking at data and we want to create a really impactful experience, where could we introduce these ideas and empower students so that they in turn could really create um, a story that resonated with them, right? Um, and so we started there, but since then we've been doing middle school age materials and uh, fifth grade, so that kind of, depending on where you are, that might be elementary, but we're starting to see, um, and there's, there is, um, Alan's connected with, is it Data for Kids? The other project that's out there? Um, I'm trying to think which project 
You're referring to data for... Um... I can't remember the founders, but there's one or two projects out there that are really focusing on how do you introduce data at a much earlier age. So um, that would be something to consider as well. I could look that up real quick, but um, Alan actually linked to another article from B Data Lit. If you want to give a plug for B Data Lit, that's... Oh, sure. Yeah, B Data Lit is a, a project that I work on with one of our other partners, uh, Sarah Nell Rodriguez. Um, I was sharing here an article around um, the AAS for Analytics book, as uh, Cameron mentioned, Jason, um, who was the author, one of the authors of the book, um, works with us. And so just a little bit more about him. So I, there's a link to the book itself from Amazon. Lee Kim also gave it. And also here's an article around um the one of the co-authors <clears throat> yeah and, and to speak to speak to john's question in a different way if there is a a lesson that you in the organizations you work with would want to see like i really want to see lessons that would teach my students to know how to clean and manipulate data or anything like that feel free to get in touch with us if there's not if there's something that that you would need in order to get data literacy into the hands of these students and it's not out there already and you think we could create it feel free to talk to us we're always looking for ways to to understand how we could best be of service for the work we're trying to do and we're not always going to know where every gap in data literacy is for the students so get in touch yeah and Cameron just reminded me about the project that I was working on. Thank you, Cameron. <laughs> um, uh, they're called Kids and Data. So he gave he shared their LinkedIn page and I'm gonna share their website. So Kids and Data, um, one of the co-founders, his son um, had learning challenges. And so he created um, a video game. He cre he's been creating some video game modules, um, not only for his son, but also for kids. They've been expanding their program where they make the data literacy fun through video games. I believe they, I'm trying to get him to create a Tetris, but right now I think he's doing Space Invaders. <laughs> so um, I put the link to the site there, kidsanddata.com. Cool, any other questions or thoughts? Again, really appreciate everybody's time. You know, it's awesome to see you here and you know, if there are any ways that we as data stories can help the work that you're doing, reach out, let us know. Um, there's a lot of really cool momentum and we're just going to keep building. So, you know, if you join us and you see these materials, you'll see more data kits. If you follow us on Twitter, you'll see us pushing these out and just continuing to create that in that momentum. Yeah. And we have your emails from the guest list. So I'll probably, we'll probably send the post message out to all of you definitely stay in touch so you'll also have our emails as well when we send that out awesome great sounds good have a great weekend hey i just want to thank you guys so much uh it sounds the educational work you guys are doing it sounds like really amazing i joined really late i didn't quite understand that you were you know uh creating stories these these ways kids for for, for high schoolers and it's it's just it's it's a really amazing that you're help training the next generation of data scientists and i will say that another area where we're seeing a lot more interest is with our university partners we have a number of college professors that are reaching out to us so while we design them for high school age i think it's, we're further still going to see a lot of interest grow at the college level how do we create this for undergraduates? Um, information science, I mean, it just, it covers the gamut, which is really what's very cool for us is it's really an interdisciplinary experience. So looking forward to sharing that. Thanks for your enthusiasm, Julian. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks so much. I'm, I'm gonna jump out, but um, uh, yeah. take care. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Gabrielle, for helping out with the soul, the whole session. Of course. No, thank you all for being here today and giving such a fabulous presentation and just adding you know, to the excitement of this community. This is really cool.